Welcome to the Successful Thinking Podcast, where I will share with you the elements for a successful thinking process and we'll talk to people who have a successful thinking mindset. Hello! How are you guys? Today we will be talking about success. For my second episode, I thought it would be good to start exactly understanding what is the meaning of success. It's key because to understand what does it mean to have a successful thinking process, we need to first establish what the meaning of success is. According to the dictionary, it means the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. So, the success depends exactly on the aim or purpose that we, meaning each one of us, define. Unfortunately, most of the times, I would say, we aim to reach superficial superficial values or things, such as power, fame, or money. I'm not saying it's a mistake, because we all have different tastes, purposes, and goals in life, but we tend to see those who are successful and we define them as successful when they have these things. To give an example, let's imagine two different people. The same goal, both want to buy a new car. The first person comes from a very wealthy family and he buys a very expensive car and he has a very expensive clothes and he lives in an amazing house. We would look, if we see him or her on the street, we might think that person is very successful. The second one bought a car as well, but worked really hard, let's say for a long period in order to get that car. Who do you consider a successful person? As I shared in the beginning and according to the dictionary, success is the accomplishment of a name or purpose. And in this case, the second one was the successful one because it was the one that had to work in order to reach or to get to the goal, the final goal, which was to buy the car. Also, another thing that is related to success is the idea of happiness. And it's very important to understand what happiness really means. So to to explain you better, I will read two pages from a book that I just finished read recently that I had a good time reading. A book written by Mark Manson with the title The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F. And I will read to you the topic about rockstar problems. So here it is. In 1983, a talented young guitarist was kicked out of his band in the worst possible way. The band had just been signed to a record deal and they were about to record their first album. But a couple of days before a recording began, the band showed the guitarist the door. No warning, no discussion, no dramatic blowout. They literally woke him up one day by hanging him a key, a key, by hanging him a bus ticket home. As he sat on the bus back to LA from New York, the guitarist kept asking himself, how did this happen? What did I do wrong? What will I do now? Record contracts didn't exactly fall out of the sky, especially for upstart metal bands. Had he missed his one and only shot? But by the time the bus hit LA, the guitarist had gotten over his self-pity and had vowed to start a new band. He decided that this new band would be so successful that that his old band would forever regret their decision. He would become so famous that they would be subjected to decades of seeing him on TV, hearing him on the radio, seeing posters of him on the streets and pictures of him in the magazines. They would be flipping burgers somewhere, loading vans, from their shitty club gigs, fat and drank with their ugly wives. And he would be rocking out in front of the stadium crowds live on television. And so the guitarist worked as if he was possessed by a musical demon. He spent months recruiting the best musicians he could find. Far better musicians than the previous band mates. He wrote dozens of songs and practiced religiously. His sitting anger fueled his ambition. Revenge became his muse. Within a couple of years, his new band had signed a record deal of their own, and a year after that, their first record would go gold. The guitarist's name was David Mustaine, and the new band he formed was the legendary heavy metal band Megadeth. Megadeth would go on to sell over 25 million albums and tour the world many times over. Today, Mustaine was considered one of the most brilliant and influential musicians in the history of heavy metal music. Unfortunately, The band that he was kicked out was Metallica. Metallica, which has sold over 180 million albums worldwide, is considered by many to be one of the greatest rock bands of all time. 
And because of this, in a rare intermediate interview in 2003, a tearful Mustaine admitted that he couldn't help but still considered himself a failure. Despite all that he had accomplished, in his mind he would always be the guy who got kicked out of Metallica. Dave, whatever he realizes or not, chose to, be me to measure himself by whether he was more or less successful or less popular than Metallica. The experience of getting thrown out of his former band was so painful for him that he adopted success relative to Metallica as the metric by which to measure himself and the, his music career. Despite taking an horrible event in his life and making something positive out of it, as Mustaine did with Megadeth, his choice was to hold on to Metallica's success as his life-defining metric, continuing to hurt him decades later. Despite all the money and the fans, he still considered himself a failure. Now, you and I might look at David Mustaine's situation and laugh. Here's the guy with millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of adoring fans, a career doing the thing he loves the best and still getting all white eyes that his rock star buddies from 20 years ago are way more famous than he is. This is because you and I have different values than Mustaine does, and we measure ourselves by different metrics. Our metrics are probably like, I don't want to work for a job for a boss I hate, or I earn enough money to send my kids to good school. And by these metrics, Mustaine is unimaginably successful, by which his metrics, be more popular and successful than Metallica, is a failure. Our values determine the metrics by which we measure ourselves and everyone else. So now uh, that you have a more, uh, have a better idea of understanding between success and happiness, I really want to focus on how I will be looking to success in this successful thinking process. The successful thinking process is a progression of your thought over an idea or challenge in order to achieve the aim or purpose you define. And to give you a short example, following my previous podcast, when I talk about Ronaldo, exactly he had the goal to score. But instead of putting his aim towards a specific part of the goal, he focused on the whole goal. This thought, this thinking process, allows him to increase his chances of scoring a goal. So, and that's what I want with this podcast. The aim of my podcast is not to lead you to success, because I'm not a guru or anything like that. But I want to make we all understand that if we develop a successful thinking process, we have more chances to improve or, or actually to achieve our goals and purpose. And this will lead for ourselves to be happier, to enjoy more and to have our life easier. So over the next episodes, I will go into depth and that's what I will go into depth more in the process as I will talk about information and that's what triggers all of the process and behavior. So I hope you enjoy guys and see you on my next episode.